Hello Internet, this is Dave Kircher here to talk to you about the digital audio automatic switches available on Tindy from creator Benny Skate. These are fully automatic switches that will uh, select the active input and route it to all the outputs. Uh, I have two units here. One is a four optical input and three coaxial input unit with all of the output options. It has analog output, uh, a coaxial digital, and an optical digital output. And over here, I have a 7 optical input unit with 1 optical output. As I mentioned, these are fully automatic switches, uh, so whichever input's active will be automatically routed to all the outputs. But if there are two inputs that are active, it has a priority system where lower numbered ports, like number 1 on the left here, will be favored over higher numbered ports. Uh, before I go any further, I have to mention that the status lights are on the bottom, so when I'm showing uh, how this works, I'm going to flip this unit over, so we're actually going to reverse that. So, just for this video, this port on the right is going to have priority over the ones on the left. But in, in normal use, you can ignore that. So to run through the single input cases, I have a digital audio modified SNES on this cable, an Xbox with the optical output on this cable, and a PlayStation 2 using optical output on this cable. So let's go ahead and run through our cases. So as a test case, first I have Link to the Past on SNES using a digital audio monitor. The unit will show orange as it's locking onto a signal, and then green once it's finally locked on. As you can hear, that sweet digital audio playing from Link to the Past. And next up, I have Burnout Free on Xbox. It detects that there is some kind of signal coming in on Xbox, but still hasn't received any signal that's valid at all and it will be switching in due time. I've noticed that during the Xbox boot se sequence it will go green and then back to orange several times, but as long as there's only one input active, it works really well. I'm just going to wait for this to boot. You can watch the status the whole way. As you can see, it keeps going back to orange, and then it'll go back to green when the game starts up and it walks back on. Okay, there's Xbox, and now for PS2. And PS2 has a similar off and on uh, behavior as Xbox. And you can see I'm doing nothing at all to the switch, it's just locking onto the signals itself. Okay, sweet digital audio. 
Using more than one port at the same time is where things get a little complicated though. Luckily we have some options to configure the device to behave how we want. There are two rules that will allow a lower priority port to become active over a higher priority port. Uh, rule number one is if a port is sending complete gibberish if it's invalid packets. Uh, rule number two is if a port is sending silence for too long, uh, it will switch to the lower priority port. And once it's switched over, if this is still powered, it will never switch back to it until it's powered off. Uh, to help illustrate fallover cases, I've got my computer playing a shepherd tone on the lowest priority port. So anytime we hear a shepherd tone, it's the lowest priority and everything else is invalid. By default, my devices had both detection options enabled, and I've found that I did not like the silence detection uh, because it ran afoul of some of my games as I booted them. Uh, so to run through some test cases, I have a physical copy of A Link to the Past, an SD to SNES that I'm going to leave at the boot menu, and then Burnout 3 for Xbox and PlayStation 2. And uh, while we're watching tests, uh, I want you to remember that this is my Shepard tone for my computer, this is my SNES with digital audio, this is my Xbox, and this is my PlayStation 2. Okay, so let's run through our test cases with the default configuration of invalid packet detection and silence detection enabled and see why I think you should turn off silence detection. First up, we'll have a physical copy of Link to the Past. That's been my experience. This works just fine. Okay, and then next up we will have our SD to SNES and we'll leave it at the selection menu. And it's been my experience that the SD to SNES does not output any kind of audio and so that trips the silence detection and then it switches away from the SNES forever. Just give it a sec while well, it detects that silence and then it switches to shepherd tone. And so at this point, it'll stay on the, the lower priority port forever, and we can't get our SNES back until we power off and power back on. And next up, we will have Burnout 3 for Xbox, which, in my experience, it works just fine. Uh, the Xbox starts off not outputting any signal at all, so we'll hear the Shepard tone, but after it boots up for a while, it'll uh, start outputting a, a tone, and then uh, we'll take over. So now the Xbox is outputting a, a valid signal with some actual sound to it. And the Switch likes it even with silence detection. Okay, so we've got valid sound and we're switched to it for the rest of the game. Next up we will play PlayStation 2, which I found has silence for too long. So it starts off fine and then for a while it outputs silence and the switch uh, switches away. Getting the shepherd tone there for a minute, but swapped back away. Oh, it's thinking about it. It's thinking about it. I think at this point it's given up on the PS2. Yeah. So at this point, the PS2 will not be connected to digital audio and we'll just be listening to lower priority stuff. I'm still going to go to the boot menu just because I like it. Yep, we got no sound. And the way we change our configuration is by hooking the switch up to our computer by USB and using some software the switch creator made. 
Uh, so if you hit check firmware version, you can see which detections we have enabled. I've got invalid packets detection and zero packets detection. That's the silence. And then you can go up to config and then say disable in uh, zero packet detection. And so that will make silence a non-factor and that makes me much happier. So now we'll run through our test cases again, but with silence detection disabled. So first up, link to the past again. There's no reason it shouldn't work, but let's just test it for testing. There we go, we got the sweet audio. And then we'll switch to SD to SNES. And as long as we don't hear a shepherd tone, we're good. And as you can see, the light, the green light has lit up, which means it likes it. And yeah, staying green. Okay, so next up we have Xbox with Burnout. And get the shepherd tone while it's not opening any sound at all. But by the time we get to Burnout, it'll work fine. And the Xbox takes over, and we're going to go all the way into Burnout, just to be sure. Come on, let's see that intro. Okay, I'm satisfied. And so now we'll turn that off and go to PlayStation 2. Cool. And the reason I've been dialing in the port priority system is because of my backup plan, which I have now hooked up to port 6 on the coaxial input of my uh, mixed input switch. Um, this is hooked up to an analog digital converter, specifically the Tascam UH, UH7000, uh, which for all my consoles that do not have digital, which I have plenty that have no digital, I got lots of consoles and only three that have nat native digital. So for any console that doesn't have it, like right now I've got my SNES hooked up, which has the digital audio, but if I pull it, give it a second, I get to keep my sound. This concludes my review of the digital audio automatic switches from Tindy creator Benny Skate. Uh, as long as you turn off the silence detection, they're really good.